And we are back here on Cable 10 Live. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm your host, Nav Man. Well, again, this is a very interactive show. So if you ever want to join on any of the conversations that we're having here tonight, give us a call. The number is 905-845-5483. You can also connect with us on social media. It's at Cable 10 Live. Use the hashtag Cable 10 Live. And you can get your thoughts or your comments posted on today's show. We are approaching the holiday season, and with the holidays come a lot of get-togethers, come a lot of parties, but also come sometimes the most unhealthy choice of foods. And join me to talk about just how to stay nutritious over the holiday break, kind of how to, how to set some positive goals so that you're not overindulging. I have uh, Dr. Sarah Selleck, who is the co-founder for uh, Lozita.com. Lose it tea. Lose it tea mm -hmm. my, my apologies. <laughs> uh, Michelle Armstrong is a, a nutritionist for Oakville Nutrition, as well as Mary Pearson, who is a holistic nutritionist. Ladies, thank you very much for joining me. Like I mentioned, I'm going to make a lot of notes during the, uh, these next few segments because I myself feel like when it comes to the holiday season, <laughs> I'm probably going to let myself go. But I'm hoping you, all Most three of you, do. they do, yeah, it's a, it's a recurring trend, but I'm hoping you three stir me in the right direction, but, you know, some of the stats I'm seeing is the fact that obesity rates high in Canada have triple since 1985, and how there's a very uh, disproportionate increase in the number of very obese Canadians. Why are people eating so much? Okay. Yeah, I think, you know, like <laughs> I started broad, because I, I feel like there's more answers to that. It's very broad, and I think that people are eating a lot these days just because it's there. Mm -hmm. We live hectic, crazy lives, and it's just easier and convenient to grab that stuff. Not that we should be doing it, but, you know, we're led to believe that, you know, through different marketing campaigns that it might not be that bad for you. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, people get kind of lured into those delicious, salty, sweet treats that are out there. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> uh, Dr. Sarah, Mary, any thoughts? Well, I think we're creating hyperpalatable foods, foods that taste so good and, mm -hmm. you know, that uh, we manufacture them to have the optimal bliss point. Yes. And uh, I, I honestly believe that we're overfed but malnourished. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're left craving all sorts of nutrients that aren't found in some of these highly processed foods that uh, have been engineered to increase shelf life mm -hmm. but really decrease our shelf life. Oh, well, for sure. That's a great way to put it. <laughs> Dr. Sarah. Well, I think what I see a lot in practice is that people actually have the information and they're very aware of what they should be eating and what healthy eating is, but they're, they're sort of living with this all or nothing approach. So yes. they're either on a diet and they're doing everything right and they're going to the gym or they're completely not doing anything. So I think what people are, are challenged with is sort of finding that way to incorporate it into their lifestyle, whereas a lot of people find that they're just swinging from one end to the next. Going into, like, I guess the end of the year, a lot of people tend to kind of have that mindset, well, you know what, you know, I'll just go to the gym starting in January, or, <laughs> you know, I, I, I've, I've already gone this far, there's no point in me turning back. Does that mindset have to change? Because is, it, is there really a time limit or a time frame in which you can make these changes, or can you just start right now? I mean, I think you can start any time, and mm -hmm. I, I read a good quote the other day, and I, I can't quote it, but it was something about making the last month of your year amazing, mm -hmm. so not waiting till January to make things, or get things started. It's such an started. easy excuse, right? It mm -hmm. is an easy excuse, and, uh, you know, in practice, I see it all the time, so it's huge that people can, I actually had a bunch of clients in today, and they were saying, I'm going to lose weight starting today, I'm not going to wait till January, mm -hmm. and to have someone say that to me was mind-blowing, mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it, so I think... I know you can you can push it off and push it off and push it off, but you know there's no time like the present. I don't think so. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Any other thoughts? Well, I think I mean it's important to recognize that the average person actually gains about seven to ten pounds between Thanksgiving and the holidays. Oh, wow. So it, it's really important actually not to go through the holidays sort of letting go of everything, but to actually use this time mm. to say I'm going to stay on track so I don't wake up in January and feel frustrated and just set back you know you've worked so hard all year going to yoga trying to eat well and then you're just going to throw it away in in a few weeks and i think that that's really something that people are sort of trying to move away from and at the very least it's maintaining over the holidays yes. you know a lot of sure. times people think like oh i can't lose or i can't i don't want to gain but i always say to people you know if you can just maintain your weight yeah. through the holiday season, you are winning. Yeah. So yeah. even just that mind frame is really, I think, a healthy one as well to have. Well, it kind of mm -hmm. goes back to the notion that, you know, gaining pounds is a lot easier than losing pounds. And I think, you know, oh, yeah. like you mentioned, that <laughs> window between Thanksgiving and, and, and I guess the holidays, well, New Year's, right? Like, yeah. it's just there's so much going on with family get-togethers. Uh, sometimes healthy choices aren't necessarily made. And it's very easy to kind of be like, oh, you know, I, I'm, I'm already here. There's no point in me right. making an effort to change. Mm -hmm. and, and, and 
at this time of year, we are really craving comfort foods. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, because they produce feel-good chemicals yeah. in the brain. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people are experiencing seasonal affective disorder because mm -hmm. of the lack of sunshine. And uh, so uh, we, we are kind of wired to store uh, wait for that mm -hmm. famine that's supposed to come, but unfortunately with the abundance of food that we mm -hmm. have, uh, it never comes and we, uh, we uh, store the weight. See, th that's a very interesting point, the idea behind comfort food, because I yes. find that that's where people sometimes use that as an excuse, like, oh, well, I'm just having this just because, like, I never do this every day, like, I never indulge this much, but, yeah. you know, like we mentioned with family get-togethers, I'm wondering what are some key strategies that we can start implementing when it comes to eating better, especially if we're at a, a friend's place where they're having a huge party or we're at a family dinner where we know the options aren't necessarily that healthy. Um, one of the things I always tell clients is to inquire ahead of time as to what's being served. Okay. You know, having the education behind you and knowing, okay, well, it's not the best meal, so maybe I'll have something healthy before I go, like a you know, really, like a great green smoothie or something like that, just mm -hmm. to tie you over so you're not eating as much yeah. while you're there. Um, and I also say to people, pick your poison. Choose the things that you love the most mm -hmm. and skip the rest. If it's, mm -hmm. you know, I'd much rather have the piece of chocolate than the cookie and chips that are mm -hmm. sitting there. So I'm not going to have both. I'll choose the chocolate instead. So if you're going to choose one thing, choose the one you love the most, not just the things just because they're in your eye line type of thing. Yeah. Sure. I, I think that uh, one of the key strategies is to actually eat most of your food earlier on in, in the day mm -hmm. um, because, you know, we have optimal digestive uh, capability earlier on in the day. We find our, our digestive uh, power peaks at around noon with, the, you know, with the, the, the sunshine. Mm -hmm. with the, and uh, so if we fuel our activity and eat lots early on in the day, you're not going to, you, you know, the, the, all the foods that are, you know, uh, readily available at dinner time aren't going to be mm -hmm. that appealing to you. Yeah. Um, exactly. So. Uh, that's why. And the, uh, the other thing is uh, with alcohol, you have a drink here or there, and then uh, How could I forget? <laughs> 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 We're it's talking about then. food, but that's, that's the real issue. No, the, well, you know, and, and when you drink the alcohol, unfortunately, it breaks down into two compounds. Mm -hmm. You know, the fat, which you will store whatever you're predisposed yes. to store, and the, and the fuel. And, and, and you know, your body will preferentially use alcohol for fuel and mm -hmm. will not burn any of the fat or the carbs or the proteins that you're consuming as well. So. Because like we're, we're pretty much like in that sense too, like we're talking about, especially if you work in an office, you know, the end of your Christmas party where typically it's a big feast or you have a lot of the cupcakes and a lot of sugary sweets, you have, you know, alcohol if you're lucky. Like there's there's other uh, factors coming to play in situations like that. And, 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 and uh, uh, Michelle, I want to go back to one of your interesting points is the fact that, you know, really choosing uh, what your poison is. And I think the issue is, you know, if you see a dessert, po the dessert table, you're going to take everything. It's <laughs> like, oh my God, you're like in a candy store. Exactly. But, um, I'm curious, you know, to kind of, in that mindset, um, how does one get fulfillment with just choosing one instead of choosing everything? You know what, like, and I think that comes with practice. Mm -hmm. um, even sometimes I look at everything and go, hmm, like, mm -hmm. I'm going to, you know what I mean? <laughs> and you have to sort of kind of take a step back and remember what your goals are. Mm -hmm. But I talk to my clients a lot about just making peace with the decisions that okay. they make. Because, you know, at the end of the day, if your goal is to lose or maintain, you can deprive yourself all you want, okay. but you're, you know, there comes a point where you're just going to feel, you know, lousy at the end of the day as to what you've, you know, mm -hmm. if you've made a wrong decision. So, you know, make a decision to make peace with it and don't, you know, feel really guilty uh, w w depending on which decision you do make. Like, keep it kind of neutral in, in how you feel about it and know that maybe next time you can make a different decision or remember how you mm -hmm. felt when you felt badly if you made a poor decision. So I think it's a b just about making peace with your decisions. What kind of uh, uh, feedback are you getting from clients at this time of year regarding, you know, <laughs> when it comes to concerns about weight gain or even, you know, figure out what a better routine is when it comes to eating and exercise or you know figure out how to not o not to over drink because you know beer has empty calories like what are some of the so some of the, the comments or, con or concerns you're getting from some of your clients I think people are just feeling uh, like mixed signals like they really really want to make good decisions mm -hmm. but get lured by all the good stuff that's out there so I think they're just mostly finding it difficult mm -hmm. um, and it is like even for nutritionists like I'm not perfect I always tell my clients like you know if there's chocolate I that's my weakness I love that oh, so, that's so comforting <laughs> <laughs> so I mean not everyone's perfect so yeah. I, I just hear difficult but yet wanting to still make good decisions at the end of the day 
Dr. I, think, Dr. Yeah, I think it's also important to mention that this is actually a really stressful time of year. You oh, know, it's sure. financially stressful. It's mm -hmm. um, There's a lot going on. So I think people often make decisions based on what they're going to eat based on their stress levels. Yes, exactly. and, and because of that, I think it's important to just, again, reassure people that it's okay. And th this time of year, you're really going to do the best that you can. And one of the tips that I often give, um, you mentioned desserts, but also appetizers mm -hmm. and hors d'oeuvres. So, you know, if you're going to sort of pick one at a time, you really don't know how much has added up at the end of the night. Exactly. And this is even before you've had your meal. Mm -hmm. So I often say for hors d'oeuvres, you know, take a plate, put it on. Because if you can visually see it, you're less likely to maybe have 25, Definitely. right? <laughs> but if you're just <coughs> taking one at a time, you know, you really don't, you've lost count. Especially yeah. when you have that no. layer that just keeps coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Really, really it's hard. like those Halloween candies that are 100 calories. And you're yeah. like, oh, I'm just going to have one and another and another. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you were calories. to just eat a giant chocolate bar, yeah. you probably would eat less than exactly. all the other ones combined. Um, yeah. Very thoughts. Um, one of the things that we kind of have left out a little bit is uh, sleep. You know, we're mm -hmm. staying up late, and when we stay up late, uh, you know, we produce, we alter our, hom our hormone production, and uh, well, we increase our cravings the next day, and so that also contributes to weight gain. And so, you know, encouraging people to, you know, do the best they can to, you know, to maintain mm -hmm. uh, better sleep habits and to. Uh, and to get proper rest, you know, take a nap if they need mm -hmm. to, uh, so that they don't have the cravings uh, for the pick-me-up. See, sleep is very interesting because I find another thing that people overindulge on, especially, you know, when it comes to a stressful circumstance, is coffee. Coffee seems mm -hmm. to be one of those things where people are just, you know, feeling themselves up in the morning, mid-afternoon, maybe even at night, just so they can either get more work done or, or kind of stay more more engaged with what's going on at home. Um, is there any drawbacks that we should kind of think about when it comes to the amount of caffeine that we're taking on a daily basis? Um, I mean, I don't have a problem with coffee or organic coffee and kind of limiting, you know, maybe to two cups a day at most, and you'd want to watch the amount of sugar you put in that coffee, of course. Hold that thought. We've got sure. a good commercial, yeah. but no, I do, I do like where you're going with that. And uh, again, uh, we are chatting about nutritious habits for the holiday season, so do stay tuned in here on Cable 10 Live. And if you want to join the conversation, give us a call at 905-848-5483. We'll be back after a screen commercial message.
And we are back here on Cable 10 Live. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm your host, Nav Nano. We are chatting nutritional habits uh, during the holidays. That seems to be a huge concern among citizens here, not only in Peel, but across the world when it comes to being around, you know, very indulgent foods and trying to find that equal balance uh, to your lifestyle. And joining me to talk about this in further detail, I have Dr. Sarah Selleck, who's a co-founder of uh, Lusatee.com. Mm -hmm. I have uh, nutritionist Michelle Armstrong, who's also holistic nutritionist Mary Pearson. Ladies, thank, thanks again for joining me here on Cable 10 Live. I'm definitely learning a lot, mm -hmm. and I'm thankful that we're doing these segments. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure our audience is very thankful as well. And we may have a caller on the line that wants to ask Great. a question. We have Tyler from Mississippi. Saga. Tyler, how's it going? Not too bad. How about you guys? Good, good. Do you have a question for our panelists? I do. Um, it's a little bit of a situation, actually. Um, I'm, soon to, I'm transitioning from moving over from uh, Liverpool, and I'm finding it a little bit expensive to eat healthy. Uh, you know, cause I've had some time to adjust, and uh, it's just not that uh, affordable to come over to uh, Canada and, you know, pay the money. So I was wondering if, uh, you know, you have any suggestions to eat well on a budget for the holidays. Oh, very fair question. You know, eating Great healthy question. on a budget. Mm -hmm. That's something that a lot of students or a lot of you know, young professionals are dealing with you know, on a yeah. consistent basis. Any thoughts? Um, one of my best tips is actually to make like stews, soups, and crock pot meals because mm -hmm. you can usually use you know, fairly inexpensive lean cuts of like turkey or chicken mm -hmm. that you can find at Costco, for example. And you can load up a crock pot with all sorts of veggies, even things that might be slowly going not, you know, not, not as super fresh in your mm -hmm. fridge carrots and even root vegetables are in season this time of year so they'd be lower cost mm -hmm. so just things like soups and stews they'll last you a long time and they're super filling because they're loaded with vegetables and protein and, and keeping with that thought you know, the, the bone broths that you can make yes. are uh, and you know the butcher might be happy to give you the mm -hmm. bones and actually you can mm -hmm. create really nourishing broths that are really mineral uh, rich and they also will have glycine and other nutrients that to actually counteract I'm a big fan of lamb broth it's my is, favorite which is very, very, <laughs> very healthy and, and mm. uh, helps build up your immune and definitely uh, definitely something to consider Dr. Sarah uh, well I think when it comes to price uh, definitely the packaged mm -hmm. natural foods seem a lot more expensive so a box of cereal might be seven dollars mm -hmm. versus four dollars but if you're looking at things like sweet potatoes and brown rice and some of the vegetables, they're really um, fairly equal in terms of the cost. Mm -hmm. So I think trying to move away from the boxed foods, um, you're not going to see much of a difference in your grocery list um, if you do sort of move towards more of a whole foods based diet. Excellent. Great insights from all three of you. Um, Tyler, any follow up? Uh, it sounds like I'll be having a little bit of soup. <laughs> <laughs> well, enjoy your soup and thanks again for tuning in to Cable 10 Live. Um, thanks very much. Before we uh, oh, went on a commercial break, we are talking about coffee and just, you know, how this time of year people might be a bit overindulgent when it comes to, you know, drinking coffee in the morning or, you know, more times during the day. But then during the break, we're talking about holiday drinks, which is another interesting mm -hmm. topic and, and just how uh, unhealthy some of these choices might be. You're seeing these at your Starbucks, at your Tim Hortons, everywhere there's these holiday-themed drinks. Um, how does one kind of go about not... You drinking those drinks as often as they drink a cup of coffee because you know those drinks do have some high sugar content. I, I mean, you just don't drink them. Like, <laughs> as you make rule, it sound so yeah. easy. <laughs> you know what? As a rule of thumb, they are all high in sugar unless it's just you know a latte without any of the pumps of whatever, mm. or it's just a plain coffee that you, of course, don't add then a bunch of cream and sugar and mm. all that kind of stuff too. But they're all high in sugar, and they are definitely going to go straight to your waistline yeah. if those are the ones you're choosing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Any thoughts? Uh, yes, yeah, sugar without the fiber. Um, yeah. without, you know, uh, the historically, sugar or sweetness came mm -hmm. packaged with lots of fiber and all sorts of other nutrients, and the nutrients that will actually help you absorb these uh, the, uh, or, or metabolize the sugar. Mm -hmm. And so to drink uh, that onslaught of sugar, uh, you know, it'll go directly to the liver, and unfortunately, the liver, you know, the, especially the fructose, will be get converted directly to, to fat that you'll oh store man. around the middle. Oh, that's scary. Dr. Okay. Sarah, what do you prescribe? Well, what it actually does is it makes you crave more sugar. Okay. So if you're sipping on it, let's say between 10 and 11.30, mm -hmm. you're going to have your lunch. You're still going to be craving sugar after that. You, mm -hmm. You're just, you're setting yourself up. It's a really bad recipe. Um, so my recommendation is, um, you know, as Michelle mentioned, really, if you're going to drink the caffeinated beverages, you've got green tea, you've got an Americano mm -hmm. where you can add, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit of milk to it, mm -hmm. but really staying away from, you know, they're, they're dessert. Yeah. They, these drinks are dessert. Literally, yeah. Yeah. 
They have as much sugar as desserts do. Yeah, yeah and, and that's why I was just kind of processing <laughs> yeah. that as, as, as all three of you were chatting because I think the whole appeal to this is the fact that you are holiday themed and, and you know, you kind of get the festive spirit, but little do people actually know, hey, you're actually adding some pounds to your waistline, which I think is a huge eye-opener even for some of our audience members who are probably tuning in. Um, going back to the Christmas theme, now let, let's, let's dive a little deeper in, into what we should probably recognize or what we should probably consider when it comes to uh, proper eating habits, when it comes to not overindulging, when it comes to not over drinking, because that's another big issue as well, and that tends to happen quite a bit during the holiday season. And and also, aside from that, you know, people are on holidays during this time of year. Um, how does one kind of go about staying active? You know, there is time that can be spent at the gym, whether it be in the morning, night, or during the day. And and I guess you know, how does one kind of go about building a routine? I kind of asked you all, all three of you a bunch of questions, but let's start with the routine and and having some fitness in your life. You know what? I'm a big proponent of not doing exercise that you don't like to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because I am not a person that like gets super excited to go to the gym. <laughs> so I don't. I don't even have a gym membership because mm -hmm. I just find it so boring. So you know, I will do. You know, I'll go running or I'll go for good walks or I'll do little short um, like fitness videos in my basement mm -hmm. or something that I like more. So I think if you're going to develop a routine, you need to develop around things you definitely okay. really, really like to do. That's great. Dr. Sarah. Well, I actually teach fitness. Oh, so excellent. Yeah, so I teach fitness and I find actually the accountability of going to a class often helps. So sometimes my participants will say, so-and-so wasn't here. Um, do you know where she is? <laughs> yes. So there's that accountability. And then also, um, just, you know, if you're at these holiday parties, don't sit in the corner and just eat. Why not get up and dance? Yeah. You know, yeah. like actually move your body. That's a form of exercise. So just encouraging people to do things like that. Mary. Yes, act, active daily living uh, is really key to this as well. I'm actually certified as a personal trainer as well, Excellent. but I know that an hour at the gym doesn't cut it. Mm -hmm. uh, in actual fact, when you look at some of the research that's being done, uh, uh, you know, sitting is considered the new smoking. Oh, yeah. And uh, so, and, and a researcher, uh, Dr. We should be standing right now. Yeah, <laughs> Dr. Uh, Joanne Vernikos, she has actually studied uh, astronauts who go out into space and mm -hmm. they age very rapidly. They, you know, they, we may lose 1% of uh, lean muscle mass and bone mass mm -hmm. over a year and they will use that, lose that in about a, a, a week oh, wow. or, or a month yeah. and so aging very rapidly and so when they get back to earth the research that she has done basically shows that the most important thing you can do throughout the day is get up every 20 minutes oh, okay. and mm -hmm. the act of just getting up changing from a sitting position to you know at working with gravity actually is very therapeutic and and helps uh, uh, you know um, uh, upregulate mm -hmm. our fat burning uh, capability. That's a very interesting uh, point because I know in a lot of workplaces now it's the idea of having like, the standing cubicle, you know. Mm -hmm. I just bought one. Oh, really? Yeah. And how is it working out for it's you? It's great. Yeah. I stand if I'm not with clients I stand all day yeah. and that's wonderful. I feel so much better, right? Cuz you're you you can move around a lot more mm -hmm. freely. And it's better for posture and all yep. that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one of those things where I think it, it, it's it's a small change but it can make Definitely. quite the difference and, mm -hmm. and I know that's where where a lot of I guess uh, office ergonomics is going. Um, let's just chat about drinking because I think that's a huge <laughs> one. Uh, you know, especially on New Year's, you know, you're, you're gonna if you're with friends or with family, you're probably gonna have a couple cold ones. You're probably gonna have some wine. Um, you know, especially during when you're meeting up with, with friends you haven't seen in a long time, or even during Christmas. You know, whether it be during family dinners. Um, Drinking in, in a way where it's not where it's smart, but it's also not having a negative effect on your body. Does that exist? I think so mm -hmm. completely. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm often telling people is, you know, go in with boundaries, like preset boundaries. Mm -hmm. Often, if you have something already decided, you're more likely to stick to that mm -hmm. goal. Mm -hmm. um, so if that's two drinks or one drink or whatever that number is, based on what your health goals are, if you go in with that pre kind of set, mm -hmm. you're more likely to sit around that number, which I think is important for people to recognize ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Dr. Sarah. So I think uh, a lot of people now, what they do is they dilute their alcoholic drinks, mm -hmm. which I actually think is a great strategy. Mm -hmm. yep. So you're adding a little bit of water, yes. even to wine and mm -hmm. things like that. And even throughout drinking, you want to make sure you're staying well hydrated. Mm -hmm. So if it's a little bit of alcohol, it means a little bit of water, yes. and, uh, right? So you're, you're having both together. I think mm -hmm. that makes a big difference. Definitely, Mary. Uh, and the liver can only metabolize one drink per hour, mm -hmm. and uh, realizing that and making sure that you and, and for women, uh, you know, s especially smaller women, we don't have the uh, we don't have the ability to to metabolize alcohol mm -hmm. quite as well as men. So don't try to keep up with the guys. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, th Great for advice. men, <laughs> for men, they have to realize that actually, you know, the alcohol, too much alcohol. Mm -hmm. 
uh, can actually convert their t testosterone to estrogen, oh. and so, you know, they, uh, <laughs> they have to think about the impact on, uh, on their lean muscle mass, and, uh, you know, they, if, they're, if their testosterone is reduced, their lean muscle mass is going to be uh, dramatically reduced as well. There's very thought-provoking points you're making, I'm glad that you are. Thank you. Um, and, and I think, you know, I'm not speaking from experience, but especially, you know, from a night out, having a couple beers and wake up the next day, it's like the worst feeling in the world, because not only you know, give or take, or you're hungover, but also just the feeling that you have of, of being bloated, of mm. being, you know, obese, you know, being, well, I guess all the carbs are, are coming to play and mm -hmm. you find your energy level to be very low. Um, all that kind of is a, is a good excuse, I would say, to stay at home and not get active and mm -hmm. to eat very indulgent food because yeah. assume that'll make you feel better. Um, and we, talk, we touched on fitness uh, briefly, and I know over the next segment we're going to touch on New Year's goals. But I'm wondering, do you think it makes sense, to, if, you, if you have a New Year's goal in mind, to maybe use the Christmas holidays to get a jump start to it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think, like, why wait until tomorrow? Now is an ideal time. Um, I, you know, I work with a lot of patients in the new year who, like I said, they just really feel awful. Mm. And if you can prevent that, why wouldn't you? Yes. So, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily mean jump-starting a whole new program right now, but you can start implementing small changes um, or in incorporating some fitness into your routine even from now. You really, really do not have to wait until January. I think it's actually an unhealthy mindset that we're so focused on come January I'm gonna do this <laughs> and then what ends up happening is that lasts for about how long right working in the yeah. fitness industry the gym is packed <laughs> yeah. in January, January and slowly we start <laughs> you know we start to see people making their way out of the gym well, so it gets better in February I'd yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, I think people equate um, the new like Christmas time with p fun and parties and yes. drinking and food yeah. and so if they have to be healthy it's going to be not fun mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's one of those things where if you can find other ways to enjoy yourself at the holiday you will actually not have such a problem I want to touch on that mm -hmm. briefly because I think that's a great point and I think um, hosting a party what are some ways in which you can make smarter decisions and, and do you know have, have any ideas that kind of can become good so actually you know what let's jump to that when we come back from commercial break because I do I do think that when you, you know ha hosting a party you have a lot of power in dictating what we get served and you know do creative substitutes exist you know when it comes to some normal party favors we're back after this brief commercial message here on Cable Live.
And we are back here on Cable 10 Live. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm your host, Nav Nano. This is a show we provide you, the viewer, all the current happenings that are currently going on in our lovely region. Uh, joining me to talk about how to stay nutritious during the holiday break, I have uh, co-founder for Elucity.com, uh, Dr. Sarah Selick, as well as nutritionist Michelle Armstrong and holistic nutrition, uh, nutritionist, sorry, mispronounced that, uh, Mary Pearson. Uh, ladies, thanks again for joining me here on Cable 10 Live. An excellent discussion. I'm definitely learning a lot as, as are our viewers. And we actually have a viewer who just called in who would love to get your feedback on, on, on her question. We have Miranda from Brampton. Miranda, thank you very much for tuning in to Cable 10 Live. Do you have a question? Question for our panelists. Um, I think it's a very important topic to bring up because what happens is people indulge a lot over the holidays mm -hmm. and then, you know, put on that extra holiday, probably 10 pounds, oh, and yes. then work really hard as of January to, you know, New Year's resolutions. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to lose weight. And it's, you know, maybe if you didn't indulge so much. In December, you don't have to work so hard in January. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I find for myself, I, I love to throw parties. I love to have dinner parties. But I think that's also really important It was what you offer to your guests, right? So maybe <clears> instead <throat> of putting out really fatty foods or, you know, have healthier options, have veggies, have hummus, have things of that nature. Um, I myself have a really big sweet tooth as well. So, and I love to bake. But same thing I've, you know, kind of curtailed as how much I do now or what I'll do is make smaller portions of things. So instead of mm -hmm. making, you know, full size cupcakes, make miniature cupcakes or smaller cookies. So if people want something, it's a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit smaller portion, you know, that does run into the problem though because sometimes you might eat, you know, four or five of them thinking it's still okay. But um, do you, uh, I was just wondering if the panel had any other suggestions as to how sort of hosts can better provide to their guests to have a healthier holiday season. Great, great segue what we were chatting about yeah. just now. Yeah, feel free. Um, I think there's a lot of great sugar-free options out there mm -hmm. for like traditional food. So last night I made cookies. Well, everyone thinks, oh my God, cookies are still in sugar. <sighs> and there was no sugar in them. They okay. were made from applesauce and peanut, like or natural peanut butter, mm -hmm. banana, and a couple, like a quarter cup of rolled oats. Oh, wow. There was no sugar at all and they tasted amazing. So you can put things out like that, that are way lower in sugar, but they'll still give you that treat kind of feel. Excellent, Dr. Sarah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that there, we just have an enormous amount of information now and amazing recipes. So I think impress your guests, mm -hmm. serve them something that they haven't tried before, you know, and get creative in the kitchen. Like, you know, instead of your typical salad, do like a quinoa, cranberry, you know, walnut salad. You can really mix it up and I think just create some really exciting dishes and maybe even inspire your guests mm -hmm. to start eating healthier because they'll be like, wow, this is not only healthy, but it actually tastes really good also. Mary. Um, for main, uh, for entrees, you know, things like instead of spaghetti, uh, spaghetti squash, so basically bake, rake, and then add whatever you'd put oh, on spaghetti anyway. Excellent. You know, a, a cauliflower crusted pizza mm -hmm. is absolutely delicious oh, and wow. easy to do. Mm -hmm. uh, pizza soup instead of pizza, another easy thing to do. All three of you are just <laughs> making me very hungry right now, <laughs> I must chili, say. Chili is a great, another great option. And then for treats, one of the, one of the things that my kids who you know, tended to w w want to do without wheat, mm -hmm. uh, they, they absolutely love macaroons, and I make them with, uh, oh, with organic, organic uh, uh, coconut. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. so, and it's you know, three ingredients. It's condensed milk and organic mm -hmm. coconut, and you know, sometimes I add uh, high-quality uh, uh, chocolate chips. A lot of great options definitely exist. Miranda, do you have any, uh, any other thoughts? No, I think those are all um, really fantastic ideas. And I think people, you know, they're especially around the holidays, they're so used to sticking to tradition. You know, we're having turkey with mashed potatoes and gravy and pie and stuff. And I think um, people just need to think a little bit outside the box or try new recipes. I mean, nowadays there's so many different apps and, you know, on Pinterest and online, you can find so many alternatives or thinking substituting, you know, eggs in a <coughs> recipe for applesauce or mm -hmm. yogurt for oil, things like that. So I think people need to get outside of their comfort zone a little bit. And um, the more and more they do it, it'll just become habit um, and, you know, make new traditions for the holiday season. Definitely. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your thoughts and uh, for tuning into Cable 10 Live. Always uh, love hearing from our from our citizens and from our viewers with, with, with great feedback. Um, brought up a, a great point uh, regarding how these substitutes do exist. 
Um, what are some of the best ways in which people can actually learn about these substitutes? Now, there is social media like Pinterest, such as you know Twitter and Facebook. But are there other ways? You know, um, maybe the role of a nutritionist. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say me. <laughs> but like, are there other ways people can kind of get this education? You know what? I I find it online. If if I can't, if I'm looking for a substitute, I'll just Google literally. Yes. Give me a good substitution for butter, and you'll get avocado yeah. and whatever come up. And so for me, it's all online. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think there's a lot of amazing programs within the community. A lot of them are free. You know, sign up for a nutrition lecture, you know, get involved with the local health food store. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because again, there's something about learning with others and mm -hmm. learning as yes. a community. Um, I may not be inspired to make something if I just read it on my computer screen, but if I'm in a class setting, I might go home and say, I'm so excited to try this. So mm -hmm. I think that's really important is just encouraging the viewers to really get involved with the community and, and looking at health food stores or the library or where these mm -hmm. um, wonderful wellness talks are being held and they're usually free yes, yes. right mm -hmm. so exactly people can go to them and learn so much mm -hmm. we actually have another caller on the line we have Meher from Brampton Meher thank you so much for tuning to Cable 10 Live you have a question for our panelists hi uh, yes I have a question uh, about ethnic diet I wanted to know how healthy ethnic diets are especially from India or Pakistan where wheat and rice are the staples uh, ingredient in our food? Uh, ethnic East Indian diets, like, and, and I can attest to this, our, mm -hmm. our food groups are typically sugar, grease, and butter. <laughs> and, and I'm wondering, um, what are some, some ways a that we can kind of look into, you know, making those things healthy? Well, does, oh, sorry. It's D just for example, like, I will often encourage a lot of my, um, you know, clients who do eat more of an Indian style diet, you know, things like rice are very prevalent in that diet, but I have some great recipes where you can turn cauliflower into rice. Mm -hmm. And then you can serve, you know, everything else on top of that, but you'll cut out all the sugar and carb mm -hmm. that maybe you would have somewhere else in the day with just simply re replacing it with a cauliflower. Excellent. Dr. Sarah? Well, I'd just like to comment that um, I remember myself you know, I was inspired to make Indian food mm -hmm. and I went to the Indian grocery store and to my surprise, what I actually thought were natural spices, a lot of the sort of pre-packaged spices were packed with artificial um, ingredients mm -hmm. and MSG mm -hmm. and these flavor enhancers. So I think just really encouraging people to, to make sure that they are using natural spices yes. and not buying these pre-packaged mm -hmm. um, you know, ethnic type of dishes. Mm -hmm. Mary. Uh, there's an amazing doctor uh, in Silicon Valley. His name is Dr. Ranesh Singha. Okay. And he's written a book. I can't remember the, the title of the book, but it's r it was released either, I think, earlier this year. And uh, he, he, you know, uh, unfortunately, um, uh, South Asians uh, have a, a predisposition to developing type 2 yes. di uh, diabetes. And, uh, you know, they're, they actually are, are much more likely to be vitamin D deficient. Mm -hmm. And he's written a book that actually, you know, helps, uh, recommend, has amazing recommendations for people mm -hmm. who, uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, that uh, nationality who, uh, who could benefit from, uh, uh, from a, a, diff a slightly different approach, uh, replacement for the, the traditional foods. Definitely. Uh, Mehera, what kind of food do you, uh, do you normally cook at home? Well, we usually have curry and rice or chapati, something, and I, um, yeah, that, that's it. And especially my husband, he prefers all these kinds of food over salad or anything like that. Oh, wow, you're making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> about that. Me too. Um, uh, what she just mentioned, you know, whether it's the chapati or whether it's rice or whether it's curry, um, are those typically things that you can make healthy, even though some of these recipes have existed for hundreds of years? You know what? Curry is <coughs> so healthy for you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. without the butter and all the other stuff to it. <laughs> so I mean, like, I mean, I'm not a chef, so I don't know how to take that or that recipe and switch it out. But you could take out the butter and replace it for like ghee. Mm -hmm. You can use ghee. Yes, you can. Yeah. Or even like a coconut oil, which would be, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit on the healthier side. Um, and maybe don't put it over rice. You put it over cauliflower, or you put it over a salad. So you still get, you know, the mm -hmm. flavors you love, but over just something that's a little bit healthier. 
Well, one thing, Emma Heron, thank you so much for uh, uh, joining us here on Cable 10 Live. But one thing she did mention uh, uh, towards the end was that her husband do, uh, does enjoy eating this food uh, versus eating, you know, the greens like lettuce or mm -hmm. eating salad. Um, okay. What kind of mindset change is necessary to really start incorporating these these uh, these foods into your diet? Because, um, you know, even just talking with friends, simply just, you know, having a salad instead of having a side of fries or, or mm -hmm. simply just, you know, making sure that, you're, you know, you're drinking your morning smoothie every day it can make a total difference not only with the way you look but as well as your energy level as well mm -hmm. well i mean i've had patients you know who have said to me there's no way i'm gonna have you know a chicken salad it mm -hmm. just doesn't work for me i haven't you know i didn't grow up eating that so i think that our taste buds are acquired to a certain taste and we have to recognize that it takes time to change that mm -hmm. so instead of taking a recipe and modifying five ingredients and expecting it to taste you know the same as what you've been eating for 20 years mm -hmm. why not modify one of the ingredients yes. and then two and so you're actually training your taste buds and they're gonna enjoy those you know dishes and then over time you'll be able to change more of the ingredients but don't necessarily take something that you've been having for a long time and change everything about okay. it because you're probably going to be really disappointed <laughs> Mary. Yeah. Yes, it's actually, you know, add as <coughs> opposed to subtract. So add good things to displace the bad things. Yes. And you can really acquire a taste for, you know, a colorful array of fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And when you realize the, the nutrients involved with those different colors and the, uh, you know, uh, the greens for one mm -hmm. thing, uh, you know, you get the nitrates that actually, you know, help dilate your blood vessels and, and increase and, and reduce your likelihood of developing high blood pressure, which, you know, happens as we reach our 40s and 50s. And and, um, you know, the, the, the carotenoids, which are, are, are uh, so important, uh, uh, antioxidants, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, for the free radical damage that we're causing by eating, uh, you know, um, some of the, the more processed foods. Uh, and, you know, highly anti-inflammatory with an epidemic of mental health, mm -hmm. you know, we know that those colorful fruits and vegetables actually help counteract Definitely. the inflammation that's going on, and that's, you know, uh, creating a predisposition to these chronic diseases. So. Well, ladies, I want to thank you, all three of you, for joining us here on Cable Salon to talk about healthy eating habits. Oh, we actually have one more segment left with you. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> definitely uh, we'll, we'll be back with, with definitely more, more, more questions. Actually, let's, let's chat about um, setting goals because it's all about setting positive goals, especially as we approach 2015. And I think that's the key uh, issue here is how do I go out making effective goals? So we'll be back. We'll chat about that when we come back from first break here on Cable 10 Live.
And we are back here on Cable 10 Live. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm your host, Nav Nan. We are chatting about uh, healthy nutritional habits that you should think about when it comes to uh, the holiday season. And again, if you want to join in on the conversation, we've had some amazing callers uh, share their, their thoughts on the holidays. Give us a call at 905-848-5483. You can also connect with us on social media. It's at Cable 10 Live. Use the hashtag Cable 10 Live and you can get your thoughts or your comments posted on today's show. Joining me to talk about this in more detail, I have uh, from lucity.com, Dr. Sarah Selick. I have a nutritionist based out of Oakville, Michelle Armstrong, as well as holistic nutritionist, Mary Pearson. Ladies, again, thank you so much. I've learned a lot. Um, we're having a great conversation. The callers have been calling in with great inquiries about you know some of the ways in which they want to change their lifestyles. And, and one thing I want to ta talk about, it's more of a personal experience, um, is this whole idea behind some of the fads that we hear about when it comes to healthy living or, or taking the next step to you know really detox or clean out your body. You know We've seen celebrity diets. We've seen people take uh, detox pills. We've seen juice cleanses. Um, what's the story behind a lot of these fads? And, and are, are any of them legit? I think some of them are definitely legit, but I also feel like some of them are just people grasping at anything to like <laughs> lose that extra 10 pounds they've got mm -hmm. tucked around their waistline. Um, you know, one, one thing that I often see come into my clinic is people going, oh, well, I, I think I need to be gluten-free. <sighs> and that's a really big fad right now, and unfortunately, you know, some people are doing it that don't need to do it. Other people who should be doing it aren't doing it because they don't want to jump on the bandwagon. So I think it's one of those things that it's all a very personal thing and depending on the person whether they need to be on that, mm -hmm. you know, fad diet or not. Dr. Sarah? Well, I think that there's definitely a reason why, you know, these fad diets are coming up. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, in, we're living in such a chemical-filled world. People are very aware of the chemicals and they're very aware of the effects that you know, these toxic uh, substances are having on our body. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> I think that's where these, these programs are coming from. I think it's important to acknowledge that, you know, what works for one person doesn't work for another person. Mm -hmm. I personally, with majority of my patients, I only do whole foods-based cleanses. Okay. So they're still eating, you know, they're not drinking mm -hmm. lemon water for 10 days or, you know, one person actually, she put up a video on YouTube and she drank lemon water, cayenne pepper, and maple syrup for 40 days, which mm -hmm. is like, you just think about that, and that was her detox, but I wow. thought to myself, you know, that's not, that's not a really healthy and it's definitely not going to work for everybody. <laughs> well, sounds like what Beyonce did, no? <laughs> well, she did, exactly. Yes. It's the same one. So <clears throat> I, you know, I really encourage whole foods based detox programs. Mm -hmm. You know, you're eating, you're nourishing <clears throat> your body with these foods that are rich in antioxidants and fiber and you're getting all of the macronutrients. And on top of that, maybe you're taking herbs or tinctures mm -hmm. that are going to help push the toxins out. But definitely moving away from these starvation type of fad diets is really key. Well, the thing to keep in mind, too, is that your body actually cannot detox unless it's being given nutrients. Okay. So you actually will shut things down. So not you're starving yourself, and you're probably losing a whole bunch of water and muscle, mm -hmm. but you're really not cleaning out what you actually have intended to in the first place. Isn't the best mm -hmm. detox, though, just water? Like, wouldn't that be the best Whole option? foods and water. I, yeah. I, I, oh, sorry, I usually say uh, we're self-cleaning, but, you know, uh, the body's pretty good at retaining water, mm -hmm. uh, and if we don't give it fresh water to, you know, to help with the detox, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to reuse what to, it has mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we, we are highly adaptive as human beings, and we thrive on a variety of whole different, you know, foods. So the Inuit uh, did quite well mm -hmm. when, you know, living in... in in the uh, and in the Arctic and, and consuming lots of blubber mm -hmm. and eating uh, you know uh, cold water fish which are really high in omega-3 mm -hmm. and you know help keep their uh, it was kind of like antifreeze for the blood and mm -hmm. anti-inflammatory whatever and as soon as we introduced white flour white sugar to their diets uh, where they ate very little carbs other than berries when if when they if and when they found them mm -hmm. all of a sudden they you know they they, they become uh, uh, more susceptible to uh, within 15 years yeah. adult onset diabetes and you know, uh, you know, all sorts of chronic diseases. We're learning about that in history. Actually. Yeah, and so we're in Kitavan, you know, so we're in a more <laughs> tropical area. Yes. But they they thrive on a higher plant-based diet, mm -hmm. you know. So. Um, if we add high quality foods <coughs> and reduce the uh, processed foods mm -hmm. over time, you know, that's probably the best way to detox and retrain our taste buds. What about the role of technology? We're seeing apps, uh, you know, Fitbit. We're seeing, um, I have one on my phone, I can't remember the name, but pretty much I log what I'm eating. It tells Fitness me how many Yeah, Fitness Pal and mm -hmm. how many calories I'm taking and how many calories I burned off at the gym. Like, are those 
good ways and kind of keeping track or, or, or is that just simply a way to kind of in your build a mindset, hey, I'm doing something healthy, I'm tracking what I'm eating? I think it's really good to track mm -hmm. as long as it's not obsessive, Okay. right? right? So there's that fine line between doing something good and doing something that's actually unhealthy. So mm -hmm. I've had many patients who just become obsessed with this many calories and this many grams of fat and you really want to move away from that. Also, if you are eating whole foods, natural whole foods, you really do not need to focus on the calorie content um, as much as the quality of the food that you're mm -hmm. eating. Yeah, and that's what I, like when my clients come in who are using the, like fitness pal, I don't have a problem with it, but they're like, oh Michelle, I'm only eating this many calories or I'm eating this and I'm like, I don't actually care about your calorie intake, I actually care about the quality of the food you're eating. And mm -hmm. so they get kind of um, distracted by what the real information should be versus what they think calories that they should be paying attention to. Mary. And I actually just saw a research study today that showed that they're not losing any more weight, people oh, okay. using fitness. Uh, and then I also did a presentation a, a, couple of, a couple of weeks ago to obsessive compulsive support group. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, the obsessive compulsive people can become addicted to things like this, uh, rituals or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like I, I saw, there's a TED talk, I can't remember uh, who the, uh, who the person doing it is, but they, she talks about have becoming completely obsessed oh, wow. with uh, with the uh, step uh, pedometer. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, and trying to acquire more and more mm -hmm. and more steps, and so it inter started to interfere with her life. And uh, well, it was one of those things where, like, I, I've, I've, you know, I've been around people who, like, oh, this is how many steps I walked so far <laughs> today, how many calories I burned, and, and I think it's, it, it, I think it's good for the moment. Like, I think it's like, okay, cool. Like, I'm actually, you know, seeing results on a phone of what I'm actually doing, but. Ultimately, like, and, and, uh, and here's the one thing I do want to chat about, which is, I think, a great segue to making plans for the new year is you have people that start these things off for a week or a month or even, you know, six months. And then, you know, they don't see the results that they want to see and they get stressed out and then all of a sudden they fall back into where they were before or they fall back into a worse position. Um, what do you have to kind of keep in mind to kind of keep the routine fresh, but as well as kind of keep it effective so you are continuously seeing results? I think you definitely need to set goals okay. and you need to reward yourself along the way. Mm -hmm. Because if you have, if, if your goal is to lose 10 pounds, well you can lose 10 pounds in a year or you can lose 10 pounds in a month mm -hmm. or you can lose it. So if you have no kind of like segue to what you want to be reaching, like what are you going to do? Yeah. And you definitely need to be rewarding yourself non-food based mm -hmm. for those milestones that you do hit along the way. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, wh where's the motivation to continue that? Mm -hmm. um, obviously the end goal is, is great, but sometimes the end goal might be very far away. If you have, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds to lose. And so you need to have little, little kind of resets along the way to give yourself that boost of, okay, I, I did that, I get this, great. Well, one thing I do want to chat about, this is more of a personal preference of mine, is I'm a, I'm a big uh, mixed martial arts fan. And uh, mixed martial arts are notorious to, to cut weight very quickly. So, for example, there was a fighter on the weekend who was start, his starting weight was 215 pounds, and before his fight he was 175. Um, how... Is that healthy? I'm, I'm just wondering because, like, I know some people who were like, "Oh, well, maybe I should pick up, you know, a mixed martial arts class and, and kind <laughs> of to follow the same regimen because there, clearly it works." Or is that kind of putting a lot more pressure on your body to really kind of develop that need to drop weight so quickly? If, sorry, God. <clears throat> well, you know, one of the things we're seeing in uh, certain uh, physical. Um, endeavors like CrossFit mm -hmm. is people developing rhabdomyolysis where mm -hmm. they go out and they, you know, they, they work out really hard and their, their muscles basically start to break down and oh, they wow. end up in hospital and, and it's very harmful mm -hmm. to their kidneys and it's happening more and more. Uh, but, you know, when you lose weight that rapidly, uh, it's, it's, it's a major stress signal to the body and mm -hmm. it produces, uh, you know, it basically downregulates your metabolism oh, and so wow. you're going to have trouble, you, you could develop eating disorders and or have trouble. Uh, uh, maintaining your weight uh, mm -hmm. thereafter. Dr. Sarah, you know, you uh, being a fitness instructor, do you see any situations like this where people are like, oh, I need to cut weight ASAP and I'll mm -hmm. do anything I need to do to get make that happen? All the time. Mm -hmm. All the time. And I think <coughs> you learn really quickly mm -hmm. that it's not a good approach. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, uh, often, actually, sadly, <coughs> what I see is the weight not only comes back, Mm -hmm. but becomes very difficult oh, to lose again. Wow, okay. So when you do things that rapidly and when it is unhealthy, you have to be aware of the long-term effects. Because for example, if somebody's going to completely cut out carbs, um, train very intensely, that may be great for a period of time. Mm -hmm. but 
they're likely not going to continue that forever. Okay. And so the minute they make that switch in their diet and their lifestyle, uh, you know, they're really going to see ba it backfire. Mm. So. Michelle. And a lot of people are losing just water when they do mm -hmm. these rapid. So you're losing a lot of weight, which feels amazing. But like Dr. Sarah said, as soon as you stop, it all comes back mm -hmm. and more oh, wow. and mm -hmm. more. And I have a lot That's of scary. <laughs> there's a lot of diets out there, and I, I don't know if I can say them, but you know that are very calorie restrictive or use mm -hmm. just supplements or injections to support weight loss, and it's too rapid, and the weight mm -hmm. comes off quickly, but it also comes back very quickly, plus some, and losing it again is very difficult. Very difficult. We only have about two minutes left, but I do want to touch on the topic that I've been talking about for the last two segments, <laughs> and that is uh, setting realistic New Year's goals when it comes to fitness and eating better. And, and all, I want all three of you just to share, you know, maybe um, some some words of wisdom as to what people should think about when it comes to really thinking about where they want their fitness to be a year from now. And Mary, we'll start with you. Uh, well, first <coughs> of all, I think you can really only change one habit at a time. Okay. And you know, when that uh, habit becomes autopilot, add another. Mm -hmm. And you have to think about, can I do this for the, you know, is this sustainable? This mm -hmm. way of eating, this way of uh, behaving, you know, the, this, uh, this, uh, this physical activity, is this sustainable? Can mm -hmm. I do this, this uh, can I do this for the rest of my life? Yes. And if you can't, it's probably not going to work for mm -hmm. you. Um, and the, the other thing, you had choose people, uh, surround yourself with like with people who are trying to achieve the same goals because you know you th they say in the fitness industry that you're the average of the five people you hang with most, mm -hmm. and so you uh, kind of uh, uh, you know you consume what they consume. Definitely. Uh, move. As Dr. Sarah. Well, I think it's important to focus on the feeling. So when you're setting a goal or you're creating this vision, don't focus on <coughs> I want to fit into this pair of jeans. Mm -hmm. Focus on I'm going to wake up and I'm going to feel amazing and I'm going to be excited with mm -hmm. lots of energy in the morning. And I'm, you, you know, these are the things that you really want to focus on is the feeling behind the goal. Awesome, Michelle, take us home. You got to like what you're doing. <laughs> okay. Like you, you have to like what you're eating. You have to like, like I said before, what you're the activity you're doing. Otherwise, you're not going to stick with it. So, try new recipes. Go to some cooking classes. Go to know health food stores and get new ideas, but you, you have to like it, otherwise it will not stick. Awesome. Well, ladies, I want to thank you for joining me to talk about this wonderful topic. I'm sure our audience learned a lot. I've definitely learned a lot. I'm, I made a lot of mental notes as well as physical ones, <laughs> so I'm going to be taking them back and we'll exchange contact information because I might have some panic attacks <laughs> as we approach the holiday season. Thank you for tuning to Cable 10 Live tonight. We'll be back tomorrow here on Rogers TV at 8 p.m. Do stay tuned. We will see you then.